Many hurricanes spawn tornadoes as they make landfall, but few get anywhere more than 10 to spawn. This beast was the exception. During its landfall in Gulf Shores, Alabama, and subsequent rampage across the United States, this tropical phenomenon spawned a total of 204 tornadoes, which is larger than many tornado outbreaks in the Great Plains. This hurricane will become one of four hurricanes that hit the United States in 2004, and would bring Gulf Shores to its knees. But even before that, it was a titan out to sea, a Category 5 hurricane that ravaged many areas from the Windward Islands to Cuba. This titan was one of a kind, and it would embark on a loop of epic proportions until Hurricane Jean outwitted it. This monster is Hurricane Ivan, the world's largest tornado maker. I'm Pat from Pat's Path Predictor, and welcome to the Hurricane Ivan documentary. This hurricane was an absolute tornado maker, spawning more tornadoes than many tornado outbreaks. However, we need to talk about how it got to this place. We need to talk about how it became the titan it was. We need to talk about how it became a Category 5 hurricane before it hit the United States. We also need to understand the science behind it and how it really became to be. So, with that being said, hope you enjoy the show. 2004 was a chaotic year in the United States, as the presidential election was well underway and the respective candidates were well into campaigning season. 2004 was also marked by the continuing war in Iraq, as American troops hoped to stabilize the region. However, what 2004 is not well known for is its hurricane season. Overshadowed by the events listed previously, 2004 brought four hurricanes to the American coast, all of which would hit Florida. However, as strong as Hurricane Charlie was in southwest Florida, and as destructive as Hurricane Francis was in Jupiter, both paled in comparison to what was coming next. You don't see this every day. A titan was about to roar to life. This titan in interest started off as a tropical wave off of the coast of Africa, typical for these types of storms as it moved slowly over the Atlantic Ocean. However, unlike all these other storms, this was an extremely large and robust wave and would begin to slowly develop as the convection stayed together. On September 2nd, 2004, this wave became Tropical Depression 9 southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands, and it was immediately clear that this would be an exceptional storm. On September 3rd, at 5 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 9 was upgraded to Tropical Storm Ivan, as winds of 40 miles per hour were found in the system. Ivan would continue to develop at a moderate pace, consolidating and strengthening as it moved west, reaching 60 miles per hour 24 hours later. Here, Ivan slowed its intensity to secure its gains and then it continued, becoming a hurricane at 5 a.m. on September 5th. However, things were about to get a whole lot better for Ivan and much more dire for the Windward Islands. In 24 hours, Ivan nearly doubled in strength, going from a 70 mile per hour tropical storm into a 135 mile per hour category 4 hurricane, making this the fourth major hurricane of the season. It seemed that Ivan was on its way to become a category 5 titan, as the NHC warned that this was possible in the next 12 to 24 hours. However, at least for the time being, fortune turned. A pocket of wind shear unexpectedly appeared near Ivan, and it would weaken the storm from a beastly Category 4 hurricane into a moderate 105 mile per hour Category 2 hurricane. It was also likely that an eye wall replacement cycle occurred during this time, and the wind field expanded considerably in this time frame. Even so, Hurricane warnings were still issued for Barbados, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, Grenada, as well as parts of Trinidad and Tobago. After hurricane force winds expanded from 35 miles to over 70 miles from the center, Ivan began to re-strengthen, becoming a major hurricane once again at 8 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on September 7th. 
as it approached the Windward Islands. At around 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Ivan made its first landfall at Grenada as a Category 3 hurricane with winds of 120 miles per hour. Grenada reported a max wind gust of 135 miles per hour as Ivan caused considerable damage to the windwards and moved into the infamous Caribbean Sea. The reason I say infamous here, folks, is because where this is where tropical storms go to rapidly intensify into titans and monsters. Ivan would prove to be no exception to this rule. And shortly after its center re-emerged into the extremely warm waters, Ivan began to intensify again. It would become a 135 mile per hour Category 4 hurricane at 8 p.m. All the way, Ivan was moving at a quick pace as a major hurricane through conditions that would make Ivan the menace it was. Ivan would spend all of September 8th consolidating and growing once again. All the way, the island chain of Aruba, Bonaire, and Curaçao were hit hard with gusts of over 100 miles per hour due to Ivan's unexpectedly southern track through the Caribbean. Then, at 2 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on September 9th, the unthinkable, yet expected, happened. Hurricane hunters found winds of 160 miles per hour, making Ivan a Category 5 hurricane. A titan that would bring pure hell to anywhere it touched. This also resulted in Ivan's hurricane force winds to shrink back down to 35 miles as the ice shrunk due to its new intensity it achieved. This strength was short-lived. Ivan underwent another eyewall replacement cycle that would knock its intensity down to 150 miles per hour, now a high-end category 4 hurricane. This would set the stage for the next few days. Ivan was now approaching Jamaica, with the hurricane coming very close to land. It seemed that it would take a direct hit from Ivan, and then towards eastern Cuba and Florida, which was already recovering from Hurricanes Charlie and Francis. However, like Dean would three years later, Ivan turned at the very last minute and this westward jog avoided a Jamaican landfall. It also put the strongest winds of the hurricane in the western eyewall, but still got the northern eyewall as Ivan passed just 20 miles to Jamaica south. This westward jog also changed Ivan's trajectory, and it was now heading towards western Cuba and the Gulf of Mexico, the boiling pot of the Atlantic Ocean. This also allowed Ivan to re-strengthen into a Category 5 hurricane west of Jamaica for a short period before dropping back down to 145 miles per hour due to an eyewall replacement cycle. The Cayman Islands were heavily hit by Ivan as it moved northwest parallel to Cuba before reaching its apex. Ivan re-strengthened into a Category 5 hurricane on September 13th, 2004, with winds of 165 miles per hour and a pressure of 910 millibars. The eye wall struck the western tip of Cuba, causing catastrophic damage to the area before entering the Gulf of Mexico. Ivan now weakened back down to Category 4 strength with winds of 140 miles per hour. However, it was now an extremely large hurricane and heading towards the Gulf Coast of the United States. Hurricane warnings were issued from the mouth of the Mississippi River to the Apalachicola River in Florida. As Ivan traversed the Gulf, the Naval Research Laboratory oceanic pressure sensors detected an insane massive rogue wave caused by Ivan's massive wind field. This wave was 91 feet high and 660 feet across, with some estimating that there were waves of over 130 feet in the eye wall of Ivan. Ivan was now approaching the Alabama coast as a Category 4 hurricane, and with the massive 115 mile hurricane force wind radius, it seemed as if it would get their first Category 4 hurricane landfall in recorded history. However, as the outer bands were affecting the coast, Ivan's eyewall degraded significantly, 
with dry air invading it and the southwestern part of the wall was almost completely gone as it was making landfall. Finally, on September 16th, 2004, at 2 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Ivan made landfall in Gulf Shores, Alabama, but its intensity is hotly debated. The official sources declared Ivan a Category 3 hurricane with winds of 120 miles per hour. However, this figure has been disputed by many in the meteorology community, with some having it as a Category 4 hurricane with winds of 130 miles per hour. Either way, the result was the same. Ivan was causing major damage in storm surge to the coast. Ivan rapidly weakened due to land interaction and became a tropical storm over central Alabama before moving to the northeast. But for many, the nightmare had just begun, as wind shear struck at just the perfect angle, causing many tornadoes to touch down and caused even more damage than all there already was. In total, 204 tornadoes were reported with Ivan, an insane record of tornadoes in a tropical system. However, the National Weather Service could only confirm 127 tornadoes. Either way, a record was still achieved. This resulted in Ivan pumping out tornadoes from Alabama to Maryland, the strongest of which was an F3 tornado in Louisiana that would injure two people and cause major structural damage to many homes. Ivan entered back to sea on September 19th after it lost tropical characteristics. It seemed that Ivan was finally out of the picture and it was going to dissipate in a matter of hours. However, Ivan turned due south and by September 20th, the remnants were crossing the Florida Panhandle. It was clearly trying to re-enter the Gulf of Mexico and regenerate. On September 21st, Ivan did just that, becoming tropical again, and tropical storm warnings were issued for parts of Louisiana. Ivan got its act together and re-strengthened into a 65 mile per hour tropical storm very quickly. In doing so, it completed the loop it took, making it the largest loop ever made by a tropical cyclone and the most impressive until Hurricane Jean just a couple of days later. It was clear that Ivan was trying to re-strengthen into a hurricane before hitting Louisiana, but the shallow water and increasing wind shear tore the storm apart. Finally, on September 23rd, Ivan made landfall for the final time near Cameron, Louisiana. As a 35 mile per hour tropical storm, Ivan would dissipate two days later, leaving a path of absolute hell behind it. The Windward Islands saw major damage. In Grenada, a 135 mile per hour wind gust was reported, and this wind would result in many notable buildings destroyed, including two hospitals. The ABC Islands also suffered significant damage, but no lives were lost there. In Trinidad and Tobago, the damage was more limited as some banana crops were killed, but nothing serious outside of that. In total, 41 people were killed in the Windward Islands. 39 of which were in Grenada. $1.1 billion in damage was caused. In Jamaica, there was considerable damage. 18,000 were left homeless as the Northern Iowa came ashore and destroyed thousands of homes. The resorts and hotels did fare out better, with many of them opening just a few days later. In total, 17 people were killed and $360 million in damages occurred. The Cayman Islands suffered catastrophic damage, with 85% of all buildings either damaged or destroyed, with 25% declared uninhabitable. Grand Cayman remained without basic necessities for months. In total, only two people were killed, but the damage was totaled at $2.86 billion, which was almost double the GDP of the Cayman Islands, and they requested and received help from the United Kingdom as the islands are still under their control. The damage in Cuba was limited to the western tip, but it was still excessive. Thankfully, no one was killed in Cuba, but there was still $1.2 billion in damage that occurred. In Alabama, Ivan's massive structure brought storm surge of nearly 15 feet, which nearly collapsed several condominium buildings that were made with reinforced steel and concrete foundations. 
A wind gust of 145 miles per hour was reported with this system. 500,000 people lost power due to Ivan, and the state's electrical grid was damaged extensively. Surprisingly, no one was killed in Alabama from Ivan, but the damage was worth $18.8 billion, the costliest natural disaster in the state's history. Florida's panhandle suffered severe damage. Many roads were closed due to Ivan, and after extensive damage to infrastructure, many roads remained closed for over a year, with some roads opening in 2008. Four years! The Escambia Bay Bridge partially collapsed, and the storm surge went over 10 miles inland, and Destin, Pensacola, and Perdido Key took the worst of the storm, as Ivan's northeastern eyewall impacted here. In total, 14 people were killed in Florida, and the damages were nearly a billion dollars. In total, 56 people were killed in the United States, either by the hurricane itself or the tornado outbreak that Ivan caused. The damages were totaled at a staggering $20.5 billion. This made Ivan the second costliest hurricane in American history, only behind Hurricane Andrew in 1992, and surpassed Hurricane Charlie from just a few weeks ago in damages. Ivan was not the last hurricane to hit the United States. Just a few days later, after Ivan dissipated, Hurricane Jean made landfall near Jupiter, Florida, around the same place Hurricane Francis did, ironically enough. But that's a story for another time. I hope you enjoyed this documentary. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps me out, helps me make more videos like these. If you'd like to request a documentary, feel free to do so in the comments down below. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, stay safe.